Hi everyone, your Chess Puzzler here and welcome to the channel. Magnus in India stepped it up big time, but two players who stood out, not just for Magnus, but to everyone else, were Wesley So and Ding Liren. Ding was the only person to have beaten Magnus and Wesley was the player who didn't suffer a single loss to Magnus. This game today is the last round game between Magnus and Wesley. Of course, I should have said that the other way around, Wesley and Magnus, because Wesley has the white pieces. And any game between these two is going to spark interest. There are hundreds of openings to choose from, and normally we get to see the same stuff over and over again. Today, it was different. But let's see if you're familiar with this particular opening. Wesley went for 1d4. We have knight of 6, c4, and this c5 by Magnus. And this is specific opening we're looking at. <laughs> Does anyone know this one? It's the Romanka opening. Okay. So where I said that is the Romanka defense which is also known as the loose gambit. That is with double O. One person who knows everything when it comes to anything that involves C5 is MVL. It's not a popular opening because if white advances, he will have two very strong pawns. So what Wesley did here was to advance his pawn. And rather than go for the main line, move here. Magnus opens up the diagonal. After the queen side knight was developed, the bishop also got into the diagonal, and when Wesley secured the center, it's all about if you can seal this control. d6, knight f3, and Magnus will try and break up this center. No way he will live with this. First he castled, and Wesley here brings out this pawn to avoid any pins. And here came in this move by Magnus, and his intentions are crystal clear. Bishop d3, at some stage, some of these pawns will have to go. This being a five minute game, it's all about getting the moves out as fast as you can without compromising your own position with any strange and weird looking moves. We know White has total control of the center, but how long can he keep it? King Indian instructions are all about giving temporary control to White. And then the idea is to break it up. And if the demolition man can't do this, who can? Castles? And Magnus does not even attempt to remove d5, but closes up the position. At this point in the competition, he knows he had one Tata, so this might have been used as a warm-up round. But Wesley was far more serious because an extra point would make a big difference if he wins. With the position closed, we have one painful situation. a3, h6, and no one is rushing any moves. After this move by Wesley, Magnus goes for a knight retreat. And though knight b5 is very much available, because black can easily cover, Wesley doesn't even bother with this move. So he goes for this move instead. When Magnus opened up the other diagonal, Wesley activated the rook. And I think this was a battle of who would keep all pieces on the board. So far, we have nothing being taken, and all 32 pieces are still on the board. Knight of six, and finally, we have the first two pawns coming off. Rookie one, and knight to the rear. And there is nothing you can do to stop the access to f4. Okay, there is something like... This knight move, and that's it. 
But for now, White seems to have the better end of the stick because of this open file on the queen side and the control the rook has. Bishop back in anticipation of a likely knight invasion into f4, and I'm sure Magnus wants to come into this spot. He goes for a completely different move. This is what he did. Wesley didn't even spend more than a handful of seconds thinking about how to play this. He took the knight. And with Magnus, you never know what he's up to next. With Wesley being concerned about the knight having the option to occupy a four. Now that he's able to block it, he did just this. And now when Magnus pushed on with this pawn, his intentions are crystal clear. Once these two guys came off, Wesley challenged the bishop. Bishop back, rejecting the offer, got the queen to return to the first. And again, what Wesley wants to do is to grab this knight too. Magnus has no option but to back off the knight. And yet, what if I told you this is not what he did? In a matter of seconds, Magnus are calculating something far more interesting. He was looking at knight f4 all along. And even though there is a pawn on g3 guarding this square, Mr. Magnus still picks up his knight and places him on f4. Speed chess, as the name suggests, is all about speed and coming up with the moves that matter. If you can do this, you're on the money. Let's consider one what if before we look at how Wesley responded here. If you choose not to take after bishop f3, once this check kicks in, after king g2, this knight does escape and white can choose to either trade, go for this bishop move to g4, and I'm sure there are other moves too, but is this move safe? It looks okay. Okay, white can go for something like rook h1, etc, etc. Now, this is one what if of many. Let's see what Wesley did. He took the knight. And when this pawn on f4 was removed, if you now arrest this pawn, this knight will be the problem. And when the bishop arrests him, white and black would have exactly the same pieces on the board. So when f4 was removed, because of this nasty and vicious looking bishop eyeing up on the knight. If you get this knight to move out, if you allow this queen check to kick in, white is toast. King to the corner and fully exposed. Runs into this bishop move. And if this is not a checkmate, white will lose material. If bishop f3 stopping this pawn is in fact stopping one type of attack, but after the king makes his way here, and for the rook to come in, the rest is very easy to work out. If you want to stretch it a bit further, bishop g2, this check, and king g1, and the killer answer here is rook h2. Nothing else. Take the rook and you will trigger a checkmate. F3 check. And there is your checkmate. And let's hear it. This is a checkmate. Schrecklich. Again, this is one variation of many. I'm sure there are other and some may even be better than what we looked at. Of course, nothing is better than a checkmate. But other variations may be important prior to this checkmate. Okay, let's come back to see what else is there for white. If queen c2, there is still a check on g5. And once the king is forced into the open, we know one thing at least, black can never lose this game. And if need be, it will be okay even with a perpet. So the only way to salvage the situation is the move Wesley went for. And now when the queen moved in for the kill, 
Wesley does go for a knight move to b5. Let's put this knight back for a second to look at something else. Bishop f3 may also be fine. And another option would be this queen move to f3. I'm looking at something a bit more provocative. What if this ridiculous king move to g2, and if the king is checked again, king to the corner will get you finished. But king to f1 looks pretty safe. But let's see how Wesley and how his idea with knight b5 works. Bishop e5 got the queen to stop any ideas of advancing this pawn. And Magnus now does go for something we looked at earlier. With the queen on f3, checkmating the white king is not going to be easy if this is at all possible. And just to make sure of this, Wesley summons a rook into the picture. Rook to the corner, and I think Wesley blunders here, and he blunders big time. What he did was to go for this bishop move. And what Magnus does here is what most people would do. He made room for the other rook to join in the party. And as soon as Wesley saw this, he moved his king west and knew whatever resources Magnus brings in, once the king goes into hiding, it would be very difficult to find an advantage. After the other rook took his place in the corner, Wesley knows if he tries something like this, he will not only lose a piece, but the game too, cause the piece that comes off is the queen. So how do you think Wesley played it here? This is what he did. And without hesitation, Magnus eliminated this knight, allowing for this timely check. And the game in fact ended here. This game has all the elements of a win to it, and yet both agreed to a draw. And because the game ended, it doesn't hurt to look at some what-if scenarios. If f6, white wins easily. After this pin, this bishop cannot be saved. Rook d8 will create another pin, and this is absolutely crushing. If after rook b7, you try rook b8, once the bishop comes off with a check, get the king to back off, and all you need is to get this bishop out of the rook's reach. And white is more than fine. Okay, let's come back to consider something else. After this check, if king f8, the rook will come off and again, white should be winning. It should be winning easy. Okay, let's come back to this position to look at yet another something else. We know Magnus arrested the knight, and who wouldn't? There appears to be something we have not considered. What if you go for this queen move? And if the knight tries to escape, there is this lethal rook check. And whatever you do here, the queen on f3 will disappear. If king e2, there comes the move no one wants to see. And it is for sure game over. So why did Magnus settle for a draw? Given that he stopped his clock with one minute and seven seconds on it, he was still able to find the winning combo. But because Wesley was also down to approximately the same time, minus two seconds, no one wanted to risk it. And the game ended in a goalless result. This was nevertheless a very interesting game. Both closed it up, and then with one move, mainly that knight offer on f4, the game took an entirely different direction. Both Magnus and Wesley are excellent and fast players. Both on a good day are untouchable, but in today's game, both have left some wide gaps. And in the end, no one was able to capitalize and convert. There are plenty of interesting games, but with this tournament having come to an end, there are other things to look at. There is another huge GCT tournament around the corner, and time permitting, 
I will be making another promo video on this. Until soon, everyone. This is your chess puzzler. <laughs>